After submitting my DNA, I was able to get a detailed um, summary of how different things are metabolized and um, deficiencies or excesses within my body based off of my genetics. Um, as far as alcohol metabolism, caffeine metabolism, lactose intolerance, which it seems I'm at an increased likelihood of, gluten sensitive sensitivity, I'm also at an increased likelihood. This was very disheartening to find out that I have an increased likelihood of weight management problems. And this whole 360 degrees would be 100%. And <laughs> I'm not quite 100%, but very much close to it. So let me see. All right. <clears throat> So as you see, if this whole circle would be 100%, I'm probably at 95 at least percent of um, being challenged by weight management. And this is something that I have struggled with my whole life. And <clears throat> they say this trait is influenced by 50% genetics and 50% lifestyle. And with my genetic factor being almost 100%, it's gonna be indicative that I practice a healthy lifestyle. But with sarcoidosis, it does make it difficult to be active because of your physical limitations. And because you're not being active and you're, you know, that kind of causes you to feel a little bit isolated, which can in turn uh, translate into finding comfort in food or other vices. So since I do not have the genetics in my favor, I must practice a healthy lifestyle. Their recommendations are to reduce my calories in and increase my calories out. I'll see what I can do about that. And quality is the key as far as the types of food that I eat and to get plenty of fiber. And this is the DNA stuff and their citations. So, I'm gonna go back. I never felt that I was lactose intolerant, but okay, but I've never liked milk. So maybe that's why I never really craved it because my body didn't need it. Gluten sensitivity. I know a lot of women in my family uh, believe that they are sensitive to gluten. Stress eating prior to being uh, diagnosed with a chronic illness, I was not a stress eater, but I did uh, eat to be entertained. Um, carbohyd carbohydrate metabolism. This is a big thing, and I notice whenever I'm in ketosis that I do lose weight pretty quickly. I have been on a low carb diet for a little over two weeks now and I have lost 10 pounds. So since I metabolize carbohydrates slowly, based on my DNA, I should not uh, really get a lot of my nutrients from there. Um, it says that I'm low on omega-3. So that might, I might, and I do love seafood. Seafood is my favorite. I love fish, shrimp. There's not a seafood I don't like. So it's probably because my body might be craving it. Um, I guess this is the bad. 
fatty acid levels. I don't know. That's well, let's click on it. So polyunsaturated fatty acid levels. So I have a increased likelihood for lower polysaturated fatty acid levels, which is the good fat. Oh, I knew it. So I'm likely to have more bad cholesterol. Okay. At least, ooh, that's even worse. It's 57% genetics and 43% lifestyle. So here's my recommendation. Cook with PUFA. <laughs> Try incorporating salt flour oil, grapeseed oil, flaxseed oil, and walnut oil into your cooking since they are good sources of PUFA. They don't tell me what PUFA or PUFA is. And that's the DNA trace. So good to know to use alternative oils. Salt sensitivity, I'm about 180, not a little bit more. So I don't like salt that much, so that's good. But certain things you gotta put salt in, you know? <laughs> so I'll just be careful of that. Monosaturate. Okay, so this is probably the oh, what, what is monosaturate? I think that's the you have an increased likelihood of low monosaturate saturated fatty acid levels. Mufa, mufa, good fat. Okay, so yeah, my cholesterol and my fat. I got more of the bad based off of my genetic makeup. triglycerides i think i've had this tested in blood work and they told me it was high yeah i have a moderate likelihood of elevated triglycerides most of the fats that exist in food in your body are in the form of triglycerides they are stored in your fat cells and are released as energy as to meet your body's needs if your triglyceride levels are too high, it may impact your heart health. Emerging research suggests that people with your genetics have a moderate likelihood. Okay, so I don't, I mean, I need to be like aware of that, but it's not like something I need to seriously focus on just, you know, as normally moderately <laughs> this is another thing that hurts weight gain after diet regain more okay it's not as bad as um <laughs> where's my little fat guy this chick right here is actually a girl with a weight management thing. Dang near 100%. At least regain more after diet. It is more than half. But let's see what they say. What are their recommendations? So it's 60, 60% 60 genetics. 40% lifestyle. So that's kind of disheartening. <laughs> like, even if I'm like 100% on my lifestyle choices, there's a 60% chance that I will regain the weight. Think on that. Why not? Let's look at cholesterol levels. Moderate. Okay. Cool. Let's see if they have any. No. Nope. No suggestions. 
Great. So this is more heavily influenced by the environment and lifestyle choices. So that would be the, okay. So the type of essential for your body's function is used to make vitamin D hormones such as testosterone and estrogen and the structure of all your cells. Your bodies naturally make most of the cholesterol it needs. Good, 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 good. So the things I need to be mindful of are my, I, I know this because I can drink coffee and go right to sleep, but my caffeine metabolism is slow because I can drink it and I'll a cup of coffee and go right back to sleep. I need to be mindful of the lactose intake, the, glu the glut <laughs> glutton, <laughs> the gluten sensitivity, <sighs> the weight, the weight. Those are good. Oh, and this is further evidence. Less likely to benefit from low-fat diets. It kind of encourages me to stay on the low-carb diet. You do tend to uh, burn more fat and consume more fat with a low-carb diet. So maybe veganism is not the best for me. Well, according to this, less likely to benefit from those type of low-fat diets. I would have to eat a lot of fatty fruits and vegetables, mangoes, um, maybe avocados. Those are fatty. Mm, I'm low on omega-3s. I do, I used to take them more ritualistically, but those pills are so big, but I, after seeing this, I will start taking more omega-3s. Leave the carbs alone. Moderate the salt because I'm sensitive to it. And pretty much when I choose a lifestyle, I need to commit to it 100%. So since I've chosen the low carb lifestyle for a little over two weeks now, and I have lost 10 pounds, only cheated once because it's like right before Christmas. And last night I had a glass of eggnog, but you know, that's still pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, that is my diet traits um, as far as the information they provided. It does give you a diet uh, where you can download your inf information. Before you get your results, you fill out this questionnaire so they can give you things like your diet. Um, my skin report. You can order your supplements from them, but they do give you the names of them if you would like to order them from a different provider. But uh, I haven't even looked at this. Oh. That costs extra, you see $20, I'm not that interested. I am interested in the Family Finder, which is $10. I plan on doing that in the future to see if I can find any family members as distant as they may be or close as they may be that also have sarcoidosis or any neurologic disorders, such as neuropsychosis or MS or anything similar. So yeah, not everything is free. They do give you some free advice, especially with COVID-19 concerns. You have to activate your kit before mailing it in. They have um, exercise recommendations. And this is a basic ancestry report. <clears throat> I'm African American. And 
I'm basically mostly from West Africa. This air, wait a minute, the Africa, okay. So West Africa is mostly this yellow green area that I am from. Just a tad bit over here. And wait a minute, East Central Africa. Okay, so you know, nothing from the top part of the Africa. Nothing says North African. And I'm about 12.16. Well, I'm 12.16% European. And that is from the British Isles. After talking to my family members, the British Isles is here. And um, that portion of my DNA is actually from Ireland. I am a dark complected African American woman with freckles. So perhaps that's where that came from. It's like I have beauty marks all on my cheeks. That's what I've been calling them. But I think they're dark skin complexion freckles. <laughs> so, yeah, and just a little titty bit, teeny tiny bit of Scandinavian, which is significant because um, other than African Americans, Scandinavians are the most likely to, um, the highest population of sarcoidosis diagnosis. And I, I was told, always told I had like a little bit of Native American in me. So this is probably that 1.05% of Native American. So yeah, that's my results using Vitagene. And I think it's really good information to know. And that's my results for Vitagene. And if you are considering it, I recommend it. Just uh, know that they do offer additional services at an additional fee, but it's really cool to know how to, um, which lifestyle choices you need to make based off of your genetic traits to live the best life that you can live and accomplish your goals. So I, you know, out of a 10, I'm gonna give it a nine. I would give it a 10 if it broke it down in regions and the ancestral part instead of um, the broad regions that it offers in the descriptions. So that's my review. Thank you.